What if the vast, sun-drenched Sahara Desert became the world's largest solar power plant? This intriguing idea raises numerous questions. Can we harness the desert's immense solar potential? Would it be enough to power the entire world? And if so, why haven't we done it yet? Well, the notion of covering the Sahara Desert with solar panels isn't new. Back in 2009, the Desertec project aimed to power Europe with solar energy harvested from deserts, particularly the Sahara. Although ambitious, the project encountered numerous obstacles and eventually stalled. But here's the big question. Could turning the Sahara into a giant solar farm actually power the entire world? And what would be the consequences if we did it? First, let's talk about the potential of the sun's energy. The Sahara Desert, the largest hot desert on Earth, spans an astonishing 9.2 million square kilometers. That's about the size of the United States. This vast expanse receives some of the most intense sunlight on the planet, making it an ideal location for solar energy production. If solar panels covered just 1.2% of this area, it could generate around 22 billion gigawatt hours of electricity annually, more than enough to meet global energy demands twice over. On average, each square meter of desert receives 8.3 kilowatt hours of solar energy every single day. To put that into perspective, the energy that hits just one square meter of the Sahara in a year could power a typical LED light bulb for nearly two decades. But the big question is, can we really do this? Well, it isn't as straightforward as it might seem. Let's talk numbers. Covering just 1.2% of the Sahara with solar panels could theoretically power the entire world. Sounds impressive, right? But here's the kicker. It would require an investment of billions, if not trillions of dollars. And that's just for the panels themselves. We're talking about the cost of transporting materials, building and maintaining infrastructure in one of the harshest environments on Earth and storing all that energy. It's enough to make your head spin. There's also the issue of sand. Lots and lots of sand. The Sahara is famous for its vast sand dunes, and all that sand can wreak havoc on solar panels. It can get blown onto the panels, covering them and reducing their efficiency. And trust me, cleaning sand off solar panels isn't exactly a walk in the park. Transporting the generated electricity from the Sahara to the rest of the world is another mammoth task. Current technology involves high-voltage direct current power lines, which are more efficient over long distances than traditional alternating current lines. Even so, there are still power losses. For instance, an HVDC power line can lose around 3.5% per 1,000 kilometers of its transmit power. Imagine trying to send electricity from the Sahara to distant continents, Europe, Asia and the Americas. The losses would be substantial and the infrastructure costs would be enormous. Well, it's not just about the money and the technology, there are deeper, more complex issues at play here. The Sahara Desert spans multiple countries, many of which are politically unstable. Investing in such a massive project in these regions poses significant risk. What happens if a country undergoes political upheaval or conflict? The stability of the project could be jeopardized. Additionally, international cooperation is essential, but challenging to achieve. Countries would need to agree on the distribution of energy, the sharing of costs and the maintenance responsibilities, which is no small feat. Moreover, local communities could be significantly impacted. While the project could bring economic benefits, such as job creation and infrastructure development, it could also disrupt local ecosystems and ways of life. The construction of solar farms would require vast amounts of water for both the panels and potential agricultural developments to support the workforce, further straining the already scarce water resources in the desert. One of the major benefits of installing large-scale solar farms in the Sahara is the potential to not only generate immense amounts of clean energy, but also to positively impact local climates. Studies suggest that such installations could significantly increase rainfall in the Sahel region, a dryland area adjacent to the Sahara. This increase in precipitation could transform the Sahel, boosting vegetation and improving the livelihoods of local communities. Enhanced rainfall and greenery could help combat desertification and support agriculture, 
which could, in turn, promote economic development in one of the world's poorest regions. However, these environmental changes come with complex feedback mechanisms that need careful consideration. For example, the darker surface of solar panels reduces the albedo, meaning the land absorbs more heat. This can lead to local temperature increases, which may create a feedback loop that further alters weather patterns. Some models predict that large-scale solar farms could increase temperatures in the Sahara by up to 2.5 degrees, which might reorganize global air and ocean circulation patterns. These changes could potentially cause droughts in remote regions like the Amazon and accelerate polar ice melt due to shifts in precipitation patterns. Now scientists are looking at different ways to get solar power, like from light that we can't even see. So, what they found out is that they can use oxygen to turn weak light into strong light. This means more energy from the same old sunlight. With some fancy tech called nanotechnology, they can make supercharged solar panels. But sunlight isn't just what we see. It's a whole spectrum, from skin-burning ultraviolet to heat-giving infrared. Regular solar panels can't handle all that, but these new ones, called quantum dot solar cells, can. They're tiny crystals that can make three electrons from just one bit of sunlight. Plus, they don't let as much heat escape, so they're more efficient and cheaper. The downside? They're super toxic, especially to our insides. Now, on to the next big thing. Perovskite. In less than a decade, its efficiency in turning sunlight into power skyrocketed. It's a super light absorber, and when you layer it over silicon, it makes even more electricity. Sure, perovskite isn't totally stable yet, but scientists are working on it, and if they crack it, we could smash the efficiency limit of regular solar panels. So we might not have the perfect solution for turning deserts into giant solar power plants just yet, but we're getting closer. As we continue to innovate and improve our renewable energy technologies, who knows what the future holds? Perhaps one day, the Sahara will indeed become the world's powerhouse. But for now, we need to focus on practical, incremental steps toward a sustainable energy future. Thanks for watching.